Hi ladies, this is my first video, so it's a bit awkward, but we'll see how we go. Um, we're going to start looking at this example. So we're going to take two dice, a red one and a blue one, and we're going to roll them together. And we're going to take the number from each die and add it together. So for instance, if we roll a one and a one, our total would be two. A one and a two would be one plus two equal to three and so on. So 1 plus 3 is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, and 1 plus 7 is 7. Looking at the next one, if we roll a 2 and a 1, we end up with 3. 2 plus 2, 4. 2 plus 3, 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. And we see a pattern starting to form. We fill in this table. Again, this is showing us what the outcome is if we add the numbers on both of the die that we rolled. So again, if we rolled a four and a one, our outcome total would be five, four plus one, four plus two would be six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and so on. And we see kind of a nice little pattern showing up with the numbers on the diagonals being equal. So we see eights all along that row. And this whole table now shows us the sample space. Or all the possible outcomes. We could possibly get from adding the numbers on two dice that we roll together. So what is the probability that the total score is 9? So if we look at this, where do we see a total score of 9 happening? So a total score, meaning the numbers added together, was equal to 9. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So total of four nines that we can get out of how many? Split six times six, 36. Four out of 36 possible outcomes are nines, so that gives us a one ninth probability. Okay, so pretty straightforward, just using the table to figure out how many of that, out, how many of that sample space are the outcome we're looking for, the desired outcome. If we look at the next example, Here's a given problem. So given is our keyword. This is gonna allow us to reduce the sample size like we did in the previous example where we were eating the lollies um, or where we knew that there was a particular outcome that was given to us. So the probability, given the probability of the total score is eight or less, what does eight or less mean? That means that we can have numbers like eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, or one. These are our desired outcomes for this problem. So again, looking at numbers that are eight or less, what is the probability that the score is a six? So if we take a look at our table, let's highlight what is possibility for us. So eight or less, that means all the eights are okay. We can sample all the eights. And all of the smaller numbers are okay as well. So everything highlighted in green there in that circle, all is going to be a possibility for us. So how many are there? Let's count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So 26 possible outcomes we can accept as our desired outcome. So given that the number is less than eight, eight or less, sorry, all these green ones are possibilities for us, which means we can cross out the other outcome because we know we didn't get those. We know we were given the information that we had an eight or a less. So we know it's only the green ones that are possible. So how many total possible given that situation? We said, said that there was, how many was it? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty-six. So twenty-six possible outcomes that are green that we're allowed to have, given that it's less than eight or eight. And how many of those are six? Because we're looking to see what's the probability that the score is a six given that outcome. So we've got one, two, three, four, five sixes. So our probability is five out of 26. Again, there are five sixes. And there are 26 outcomes that are eight or less. So given information, we're allowed to reduce our sample space by crossing off the ones that we know we can't have. So in that case, we knew we could not have a 9 or we could not have a 10 because those are bigger than 8. If we look at the next example, given the probability that the total score is greater than 9, so what kind of information do we have here? Greater than 9, what's our sample space we're allowed to have for that? That would be 10. 11, or 12. These ones are greater than 9. So in this case, we do not include 9. So our sample space is just these three values. And if we find them on the table, which ones are they? Take off those red lines. Because we can actually include those now. So greater than 9 are 10, 11, and 12. And we see that that's these guys here. 10, 11 and 12. So how many total do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 possibility. And what is the probability that you have a score of 11 given that it's those 6 outcomes are possible? So what is the possibility that we have an 11? How many 11s are there? Well, so there's one and two 11s. So our probability is two out of six or one third. So again, given the probability that the total score is greater than nine, meaning we could have 10, 11, or 12, we're looking for the numbers that are 10, 11, or 12. What is the probability out of those that we have an 11? And we saw that there was just the two options for the 11. So two out of six. So again, you can use this to help eliminate things. In that case, we could have ignored all the other values that are bigger, like, or sorry, smaller, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, etc. So as a key, fill in your table and then cross off or highlight either what you can't use or what you can use and figure out your probability from what is left. So expected values. This is our next mini little topic here. Oops, too far. Expected values. So if you know a probability of an event happening, we can use an expected value to find out how many of that event you would expect to actually happen in a group of six. Kind of confusing. But here's the example for you. If the probability of being a blonde at Rangiruru is 0.3, how many of the 700 students would you expect to be blonde? So, we know our probability that's been given to us is 0.3, and the total possible number of events is 700. That's another important thing for us to be aware of. So, we would expect in this case that 0.3 of those 700 girls, which is equal to 210, would be blonde. And our formula for expected value is taking the probability of the event happening and times it by the total number of opportunities it has to happen. So what I'm saying is that each girl has a 0.3 chance of being blonde. And if there's 700 girls, how many of those 700 are going to be blonde? We'd expect to find 210 of them will be blonde. So it's kind of like a prediction for our population. How many would we predict might be blonde if we know the probability? If we look at the next example for us, the probability of catching a flu is 
So we have our probability. How many students would we expect to catch the flu in a school of 850 students? So again, we've got our probability, which is 0 0.325, and the total number of students is 850. The expected number to catch the flu would be the probability times the total number. So 0 0.325 times 850. And what do we get when we work this out? Open the calculator. We get 276.25. And can we have 0.25 of a girl? Probably not. So we'll just round it to 276. All right. So what our answer here is saying, 276 students, is that out of 850 students, it's likely that 276 of those students will catch the flu. And that pretty much covers us for our basics for probability. And if you get the opportunity to do those practice problems in your homework book, very helpful for you. And these are just a few reminders for you in case you need them. Don't forget that you've got your fraction key on your calculator and your fraction to decimal key on your calculator. Key thing to remember about probability is that probability can be given as a decimal, a fraction, or a percentage, such as 0 0.25, 1 quarter, or 25%. Those are all the same thing, just represented different ways. To remind us, if the probability of some event named A is 0 0.35, if we wanted to convert it to percentage, we would times by 100. So 0 0.35 times 100 equals 35%. And remember, if you need to write as a fraction, you can use your fraction to decimal key. So 0 0.35, hit your fraction decimal key, and you get 7 twentieths. A second example to look at, is the probability of some event B being 4.5%. If you need to convert it to a decimal, in this case, divide by 100. So remember, if you're going from decimal to percentage, you times by 100. And if you're going from decimal, sorry, from percentage to decimal, you divide by 100. So 4.5 divided by 100 is 0 0.045. We always want to calculate, very important, always want to use our calculations using fractions or decimals. So you must convert it if you have a percentage into a decimal or from a percentage into a fraction. So you have to use fractions or decimals, never the actual percentage number. So a few more examples on this basic idea. There's an 85% probability that the students at Rangi will do some revision over the school holidays. How many students... All right. How many students can we expect to revise in the holidays if there are 700 students at Rangi? So this is an expected value problem, kind of like what we were just talking about with the flu. So we need to have the probability times the total number. But in this case, our probability is in a percentage. So first thing we need to do is turn the 85% into a decimal by dividing by 100. So 85 divided by 100 would give us 0 0.85, and that's our probability. And our expected value, then, is the probability that they'll revise times the total number of students. So in this case, exactly like I've written there, 0 0.85 using the decimal times 700, and we get 595 students to be expected to revise over the holidays. So again, an 